With one of the best savings rates in America, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Even easier than choosing Slash to be in your band. Next up for lead guitar. You're in. Cool. <laughs> yep, even easier than that. And with no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, is it even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. Capital One and a member FDIC. The following show contains adult content. It's not our intent to offend anyone, but we want to inform you that if you are a child under the age of 18 or get offended easily, this next show may not be for you. The content, opinions, and subject matter of these shows are solely the choice of your show hosts and their guests, and not those of the Entertainment Network or any affiliated stations. Any comments or inquiries should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for listening. Hey ho, hey ho, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, bringing you the good times in music, fashion, pop culture, and entertainment. We got a great show for you guys today. I'm organizing my camera. Before we get started, just to let everybody know, I'm not in the chat room yet because my computer did a, a reboot that I go on the chat with, so I'm not there yet, but I'll be there in a minute, and I hope everybody is doing well. Before we get started, we got a great show for you guys today with uh, Monique Parent and CJ Graham. It's going to be a blast, but before we get going, let's introduce my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. I'm trying to get Astro to say hi. And as Joel, why are you, why are you being tipsy? He's afraid. Don't be afraid, honey. Anyway, <laughs> Astro says hi to everybody. Hi, hi, hi. Hey, say hi. Come on, honey. Say hi. They say hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Oops. I said he's on the floor. <laughs> Come on up, honey. Anyway, uh, while Ron's playing with Astro, I'm trying to get into the chat room. We've got a great, great show for you guys. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, what did we do? Oh, we had a, we went to a party on the weekend. Yeah, so we what do you mean? Time. What did we, we do? We went to Mar uh, Dom's birthday party. Marcel had a lovely surprise party for Dom. Marcel Walls. And that's it. And we had a great time. And, of course, uh, we spent time with our guest, who's coming on in a little while. She's beautiful and lovely and sweet and nice. Fabulous. Everybody at the party was really very nice. We all got along fine, as I wrote. No one got drunk. No one was doing drugs. No one was screwing around like most hoes in our business do. So it was a nice crowd of decent people. See my dog? I jump him around and his hair goes up my nose. <laughs> anyway, it was a good weekend. <laughs> we have more coming up. We have Janae Montague King's uh, birthday, which is quite an ordeal. It's going to be bigger than any event that we've been to. It's, it's like a wedding. He's doing it at the... Um, Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles, which is quite a hotel. And it's going to be sit down, dinner, black tie only. So we'll have lots of photographs and story on that. Then Jimmy and I stay at the Ambassador Hotel. And then the next that night, because the next day we have the Academy Award party to go to. That's black tie also. So it's a double hitter, double header. Two days in a row of socializing, seeing people, partying, and eating. I don't know what I'm going to do because all the food they have there is not healthy food. You know, they serve wedding food or whatever it is. And the cakes and the stuff. Luckily, you know, I don't drink, so that's okay. But when I see those cakes, boy, do I get... Mm. <laughs> I mean, I can't say no to a good piece of cake. Right. Mm. Think? But we don't eat cake anymore, really. No, so we yes, don't. We but if, you but ate they, a little piece the other day, a, and they're going to have a, like a dessert it. table to drop dead from. And you know, Janae is going to make it like it's going to be probably a hundred thousand dollar birthday party because he's very rich. He's worth millions. Unlike some millionaires we know that are cheap, that they have people work for them for nothing. 
you know, <laughs> Janae uh, is very generous. I like love it. Anyway, we had to, you know we had to donate 150 bucks a piece to go to this his birthday to the Harvey Milk uh, Foundation, which is a wonderful foundation, and Janae supports it all the time. So if any of you out there want to give some money away and you don't know where to put it, give it to the Harvey Milk Foundation. Okay. There you go. So we got people coming in the chat room. You guys, sorry, I can't get my computer isn't going yet, so I'm on my phone. But we want to say, hey, Don Hinton is in the chat room. Cindy Lady Lake, thanks for all the promo support. Uh, Dave Hughes just joined us, and uh, he just did a show for a, a UK DJ who passed away. So we're sorry about that to hear about that, but but uh, we're happy that you joined us today. And um, oh, good. And now the computer's starting to work. So talk, so I can get it. Well, on. I I also had bad news that I I put on Facebook. I was friends with Stella Stevens, the movie actress, for a long time. I hadn't seen her since we moved back to Palm Springs, and that was quite a few years. And I called her, and the number was uh, not disconnected, but we went somewhere else. And they, the people said that she's in a home. And I said, oh, my God, why is she in a home? And they said she had Alzheimer's disease. Well, I kind of hoped that... She would anyway. I wanted to go visit her in the valley where she was in a nursing home, and they suggested that I don't because she really didn't recognize anyone anymore. Sad. That's the sad part of this disease is that you lose your memory of people, and you don't know who even your loved ones are. At any rate, she passed away five days ago at age eighty-four years old. I'd like to talk about her a little bit. She was a very vivacious, fun gal. Uh, we used to go to Blackwell's house and and have a lot of fun with with Stella. You have to say Mr. Blackwell's house. Mr. Blackwell, yeah. And uh, Jane Russell and I spent an evening with her at Rock Hudson's house, and the night was just electric. Uh, she was on. She told me she had written a couple of uh, books or plays or whatever it was, and she was just full of life, and that was Stella. Stella was campy and, and up and energetic. And then this dreadful disease got her and took her away from us. So I'm losing everybody. The only one I wrote that is left is actress Terry Moore, who was part of our crowd, Jane Russell's very dear friend. And Terry Moore is 90-something, so who knows what. It's so sad. She still looks pretty good, though. Remember, we saw she her. Looks, I guess that was she before She looks COVID. wonderful. She still hikes two hours. She lives in Santa Monica on the beach, and she hikes two, two miles one way and a mile back every day at her age. And she eats well, and she's a healthy lady. Still, I mean, what good are you at 105, 110? You may be alive, but I don't know what shape you're in at 110. I'll have to let you know if I ever get there. I doubt it. Um, my mother used to say all the time, when you're young, you go to weddings, and when you're old, you go to funerals. And that is so true. And that is so sad. But we all are born, we all live, and we all have to go to the next dimension. So, Stella, you're now with everybody you love. Um, rest in peace, my sweet friend. There you go. Okay. Okay. Did you get done yet? No, I'm on now. I, I'm in there. So I what are you doing over there? I'm joining. I'm saying hello to the people in the chat room. Oh, hello, and, everybody uh, in the chat room. And uh, right, Astro. Everybody's in the chat room. Look at all this orange. I mean, you. I'm in orange. You're in orange, and the faces behind us are in orange. I mean, really, orange is the most unattractive color, you know, for television. Oh, I like orange. No, but very I look nice. Very few people. <laughs> no, very few people look good in orange. It's not the most becoming color, believe it or not. You would think it is, but it's really not. So what else do we have going on? So, yeah, we have the Oscar party. We have Janae's birthday, birthday party, the Oscar party. party. Then we have um, so many well, Hopefully things. some movie things that are coming together. Mm -hmm. You guys were working on a bunch of films. Yeah, I'd like to go to work. I mean, they keep telling me soon, 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 soon. I keep asking them, when are we shooting all these movies? Soon, 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 soon. You know, Hollywood soon means <laughs> forget about it. I mean, what they mean soon. 
They say we both look like oranges. <laughs> we all look like pop, popsicles. Anyway, that's suckable, so that's nice. Oh, I'll listen to you. Lickable. Lickable. Anyway, um, financing films today is not easy. You know, so many people, uh, money people, have lost their shirts in bad investments with the Bitcoin. What's it called? Bitcoin. Bitcoin and all the other and things. All that, that NFT were, stuff. That were running around. They were all rackets, by the way. They were like the pyramid years ago, which the first guys in made money. The last guys in lost everything. So money is tight among even the very rich. And getting a backer, an investor for a movie, just ain't easy. But Jimmy's good at it. And they all trust Jimmy and they like Jimmy. So he's negotiating with quite a few uh, money people on, you know, Jimmy's got about, what, 14 films in the making? Yeah, but not, like a nine of them are like almost ready to go. Nine are ready. Which I can talk about some of them. One of them is called My Porn Star Wife, and it's a romantic comedy, and Ron will be in it. Then I have Quigley. I don't play the porn star no. wife. The porn, porn, what is it? Porn star wife. Porn star wife. I don't play it's that a, part. Based on our true story, it's kind of like Pretty Woman. Right. Um, we also have Quigley too, which oh, we have Quigley some great people attached I'm in to. That one too. And Ron's in that one too, and that one is my priority at the moment. I we, love Quigley. Quigley is going to play every Christmas from now the rest until of your life from, for everybody's from, life from now until the end of time. And we it's, also, it's the most wonderful script. I, I've been reading it for a long time, and I, I'm so happy to be in it. Uh, it's a movie I'm really going to enjoy. It's about you know dogs, which I adore and love. One that dies and comes down from heaven, and he helps autistic children who may lose their toy factory due to an evil, wicked uh, gangster. Woman, yes. Woman. It's going to be a lot so of fun. So it's a wonderful movie. It's a, it's a feel-good movie. Family and, movie. And family, and I love that. I'm so happy about that film. What else, Jimmy? Uh, then we also have... Um... Uh, Red River. Red River with Jennifer I'm in James, that. and we're going to be getting that one going. And we right. have hopefully the Death House. Death House. Which we I'm in going. that, and I play a very famous movie star's father. I don't know why we have that big light. Why, why that screen is so white behind because us? Because we're heavenly. No, I don't like that though. Maybe we just turn that. Whole no, thing it's off. nice. It looks like we're in heaven. Why don't we just turn it, make it black so people can see us? Okay. <laughs> with a big round circle in the middle. That's okay. That's the light. That's have, our halo. We light. have that no matter anyway. We have that always. Is that, that looks any better, like shit. Don? That doesn't look good. Hey, Don, is that better? Well, they're saying that it's I really like bright. White, it's hard to see us. Now. I like the white better because it made us look like we're in heaven. They say it looks better, though, like this. You want us to go back? It shouldn't have that heaven. It shouldn't be white. It never has been before, so I don't know why it's doing because that. Because you screwed up something. I didn't screw up. Anything. You push buttons. No, I didn't. He loves to push buttons. I did. Right. I should. I, I want to cut my no, hair. Look, it's all pink and. Sh oh, oh I like the pink. It's nice. I want to cut <laughs> my hair, but then I don't like it short and I don't like it long. Do you ever get that way with your hair? You just want to shave it off because you don't know what the hell to do with it. Right. I mean, I know. I said when I worked as a hairdresser, women would come in and tell me that, "Oh, I'm going to shave my head off and wear wigs because it's such a bother." having uh, to come to the hairdressers weekly because in those days they used to come once a week we'd give them a wash and a set tease up their hair spray it with 30,000 cans of spray net so it was like a steel helmet and they'd come back the next week and when the shampoo girl got them in the sink they'd have to run hot water to get all the lacquer out of their hair imagine so not today women today don't care about their hair they wear it long hanging it looks like it got eaten up by some rats. You know, it's all choppy and horrible. And they don't care. Women today don't care what they look like. And yet they wear big false eyelashes with that stringy, dirty looking hair. It doesn't work. It doesn't make sense to me with those ridiculous long eyelashes like drag queens. Women have got to get back to being the beautiful women they were 20 years ago. Uh, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, women look wonderful. Suddenly... I mean, they wear evening gowns with combat boots. I could throw up when I see that. It's so like, what are you trying to prove? Are you trying to not be your mother? Ron hates that when he sees people in like gowns and I combat boots. I tell them, I said, you have some nerve <laughs> wearing a gorgeous designer gown with combat boots, military boots. What are you, sick in the head? That's not chic or fabulous. Some some woke, what is it called? Woke? Woke. Some woke <laughs> moron who should woke up. They should really, they have to woke up these people. Have the fashion people today are demented. 
what they make you wear, torn, ripped jeans, filthy, dirty holes, rips. What, that's chic? That's wonderful. In my day, you would be ashamed if you had a hole in your... Women had a run in their stocking, and they were ashamed. It's so funny because we have a friend, Young Zuck, and he always wears ripped jeans. And uh, and Ron's just like, how much did you pay for those? And it's always like hundreds of dollars for jeans with holes all in them. And yeah, Ron just he pays can't $150, <laughs> I said, you know what? I could do that for you very easily with a razor blade and scissors, and it would cost you nothing. I mean, it's just fashion has just gone to the uh, to poor people. Look, years ago, everybody wanted to look rich. We all dressed to look good. People wore beautiful jewelry, diamond jewelry, ruby jewelry, lovely rings. Women wore diamond hearts. They wore earrings. Uh, their hair was done. They wore well. The fur I didn't care for because that was animal. So I was never a great uh, admirer of people in fur, but I liked women wore, wearing fake fur, and it was just very chic. Today, women are losing out because they're young, and they're now doing the most to look beautiful. Yes, yeah, Cindy and then says when she likes the old school. Hollywood yeah, glamour. and then when they're 70 or 60 or 50, they say, you know, I missed out. When I was young, I could have worn the beautiful clothes of years ago. I said, I look like a jerk. And now that I'm an old lady, I want to be beautiful. And I look in the mirror and I look like a jerk. So, But not it. this guest we have coming on now, who's the most no. elegant woman I've ever and, met. And she dresses absolutely beautifully. I mean, I've never seen Monique ever in ripped jeans or crappy clothes or combat boots. Monique is one is one of the... But she's here, so we're going to bring her in. Oh, Mo Mo Monique is here? Yeah. She'll tell you herself. That would be my first question. And we're going to bring her on. Monique, right. I love Juan, you, Monique. Let's bring Monique on. Hello. Hey! And so hey. I put a dress on. Look at that stunning <laughs> woman. Look at her with the red... Here, I was going to wear my ripped jeans. Top. You look beautiful. <laughs> she said, here, I was going to wear my ripped jeans. Yeah, don't you dare. I told you. I warned you. <laughs> I don't even own a pair. Oh, I know. Good. We know you don't. I didn't don't. think so, Monique. <laughs> You're learned, always you're always so beautiful. I learned so you. much stuff about you that we're going to talk about in a minute. In right. Researching you for coming on, but the show. Monique, the question is: No, no, no wait, we're going to introduce her. Nobody no, knows I, who I she know is. Her. I know, but the whole people listening don't know her. Uh, you know, <laughs> how gorgeous and stuff she she's is. gorgeous. You got to see her in person. All right, everybody. <laughs> now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Juan Russell, actress, producer, director, and I learned she is the thinking man's sex symbol. Monique Perrin, hello and welcome to the show! Yay! And I don't have to Good afternoon. So lovely to see you guys. Yes. I, I don't have to be introduced to somebody I love so much. You are a new friend, but I caught on fast with you because yes. you're so sweet, you're so kind, you're so giving, and you're just a good person. And if you turn out to be a bitch, I'm going to just leave the fucking business. <laughs> I do have bitch inside of me. <laughs> I know. I've seen it in some films. You can play bitch good. <laughs> anyway, you're just a lovely, I mean, enough flattery. Now, answer the question. How do you feel about women wearing gowns and military boots? You know, as somebody who, as I've gotten older and my feet do not like wearing high heels anymore, I understand it from a comfort perspective. However, it's your chance to dress up. It is your chance to be beautiful. It is your chance to. And I think that combat boots don't go with an evening gown. Of course yeah, they don't. I think it's great on an editorial photo shoot. You know, I love seeing an evening gown being presented, you know, in a construction site. And it's like the, the juxtaposition of the glamour with the work. That's beautiful in an editorial shoot. But when you're going to an event where you are dressed to the nines, complete it. And if you if your feet hurt, wear a simple ballet flat. Let me tell you, Jane Russell is 89 years old. She and I went to a formal affair. We went all over Florida at the time looking for shoes for her because she forgot her shoes in California, her high heels. She couldn't find a pair that really fit her well that were comfortable. So what she bought were flats with the beautiful rhinestone buckle on the front of it. So when we were posing, it looked like she was in high heels because her gown came down to the rhinestones. Exactly. And nobody knew that she was in flats, except she was a lot shorter than she normally is. So you can camouflage and get away with flats. 
Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to wear combat boots. You can wear a graceful, pretty shoe that goes with the outfit. So wait, real In quick. Fact, too. I should actually buy myself some pretty sh flat shoes because I kind of... <laughs> And that, now let's, no, 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 let's talk about jewelry now. Women okay. should wear jewelry again. Like somebody I know that's getting a yellow canary diamond for an engagement <laughs> ring that is magnificent. You're not allowed to talk about that. I'm not allowed to talk about <laughs> Ron doesn't know private di di difference. No, I, I, <laughs> she never said it was private. We don't know, know who I she am. is anyway. We don't know who she <laughs> is anyway. <laughs> It could be somebody else other than... It could me. be somebody else. Lots, yes. somebody Lots else. of women. <laughs> who's no, got, wait a who's second. getting a four-carat canary yellow <laughs> diamond? So, <laughs> hold on, you guys. So wait, we have a chat room. People are starting to fill up. They're all talking about how okay. beautiful you are. So say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hi, everyone. Monique, Monique has probably... Going back to jewelry. The... You know, when I got my, my uh, Apple Watch, uh -huh. it comes with a, a very basic band. But you know I had to glitz it up. Yes, right. I did the same. I have a glitzy one too. No, I kept, to. I kept the crappy rubber band. Oh, because, well, see, it's so well, this is my. I I usually change change. I had a black shirt on earlier, and I looked like I was in mourning for Stella Stevens, which I am. But I didn't want to look like I was, right. so I changed. But I didn't change my wristwatch. I usually have a pink or a peach or a white wristwatch to wear. That seems so much more you. Yes, it yeah. is. I have a. But uh, this is my. I say a lie, but it gives me my heart rate, my Same. temperature, everything, you know. I have a gold-plated Apple Watch with a, with a Rolex oh, excuse fan. Excuse me, man. It's really cool. Oh, <laughs> not a gold, <laughs> gold-plated one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So hang on. I wanna, here's what, so we're going to talk about your movie and film career and all that stuff, but I want to talk about the stuff I discovered yesterday, which I didn't okay. know. So you guys, Monique has the most amazing YouTube channel. And when I say like amazing, I mean really amazing. Well, she's amazing. Um, her website, it's, I guess it's called Unique Monique because her website is uniquemonique.com. And her YouTube channel is Let's Make Life Fabulous After 40. And it's, she's like an advocate for celebrating natural beauty and aging gracefully, of which look, because you're so gorgeous. And she has a zillion videos on there talking about like – I don't know. What are some of the topics? Because I don't even remember. They're so cool. Living with gray hair, uh, transitioning from coloring your hair to somebody who doesn't color your hair and has gray hair. That's a big deal for women because it can only be handled in a couple of different ways. And neither of them are fun or pleasant. Men don't really go through that because two haircuts and boom, you're gray. Women, <laughs> it's a thing that it's like, it takes years of being really unattractive while you have half gray and half colored hair and how do you emotionally get through that and everything that your family says to you. So we cover a lot of things like that as well as makeup tips because until recently women with gray hair were not represented in any magazines. That's originally why I started the channel because when I went gray I couldn't discover any makeup tips. And I thought, I'm in the business. If I don't know what what's happening for all the other women. So I decided to make a sort of a guinea pig of myself. And it's like, I, I'm not a makeup artist, but I will do videos and I'll put on you different a lovely job. Yeah, you And I a lovely asked job. you, I know your age and I couldn't believe your age. So I exact everybody, I exact I'm I have very I'm very nervy. <laughs> I examined her face. I look for scars behind the ears. I know where the scars are for, for face jobs because I used to be a hairdresser and half of the women I did when their hair was wet, all I saw was scars all over. Yep. You have absolutely not one scar in your, on your face. So that face has never been altered by it surgery. Been altered. But, it it's get a but it's phenomenal because in person, you look 30. And I know you're not 30. You're really 87. 87. <laughs> and you look 87. For 87, I hope to look as good as you are when I'm 87. <laughs> not that I noticed, because I really, I watched several videos. I didn't watch She's all not 87. Them, but I, well, yeah, she's just joking. It's not 87. But but I watched them, and I saw how many views you have on all your, how many subscribers you have, and how many views you have. Everybody definitely needs to check out the channel, especially older women who maybe are not aging gracefully or right. don't know what to do to help help make themselves, to make their appearance look better. But I was I, super I guess, impressed. As a hairdresser and a hair colorist technician, I used to do corrective coloring. Okay. Customers would come into the salon. I worked in Sutton Place. 
very elegant part of New York. And very wealthy women would come in and they were on vacation and they got a touch up somewhere and they came to me with a mess. Orange roots with brown ends or black roots, horrible. So my suggestion is over 40, go lighter and lighter. Do not do black. It's horrible on any woman over 40. Horrible. And go lighter and put highlights in your hair. Do a beautiful chestnut brown, which is soft and with a glow, and do a couple of nice light golden uh, highlights if you want to stay colored. If you don't want to color, let it grow in gray. But you don't have to suffer, as Monique said, the grow out, because you you can do a saline and have it bleached out. I have done that to many women. I've, of course, cut their hair into a, what we used to call the French feather bob. It was all cut all over the face, you know, choppy looking. But I would also bleach their hair and make them uh, sort of a uh, blondish white uh-huh. until they grew out. So you don't have to suffer the grow out. In fact, but that's what I did. A lot of people can't afford it. So what you do in the meantime, you wear a hat, you wear a wig, you wear a kerchief. <laughs> You know, or you just don't go out. You have amazing hair, though. When I put the promo out with the picture oh, yeah. you sent us, everybody was like, oh, my God, who is that? She's so gorgeous. She's so oh, beautiful. I wish she would have let her hair down today so people could have seen <laughs> what a mane At the end, had. before we like yeah. it. <laughs> She's got a mane of beautiful, beautiful, natural white hair. Marilyn Monroe would have wished she had your hair. Poor Marilyn. She had kinky hair. So they used to straighten it and bleach it, and hair for the time it broke. Yeah. You know, she had no hairline, so she was always wearing wigs. So everybody that sees Marilyn Monroe and those wonderful hairdos, wig, 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 wig. Now, I also know that you own wigs. Would you wear oh, wigs? I own a ton of wigs. I love wigs. I sure, think they're super wigs fun. Are fun. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah. Ron has a great way to, Sometimes I have, I have gray wigs because sometimes I don't want to damage my hair. Sometimes it gets very damaged on set and it right. turns yellow. And then it looks blonde, and then people call me blonde, and I have to say, I'm not a blonde. <laughs> <laughs> no, but a, about this. a wig changes your whole look. I mean, you could wear a very crop, boyish bob thing in a suit and look stunning. You know, it's, it's fun. Wigs are fun. Wigs are fun. So I noticed on your IMDb, too, though, that you also did a documentary called Gray is the New Blonde. Yes. Yes. How very, cool is that? That? No, that, very, was, that was a wonderful thing to be a part of, a wonderful movement. It was being created right at the time that I had just transitioned into gray hair. And I was learning so much about how women are treated as they age and how women are treated with graying hair versus how men are treated. And it was a real eye opener. I like it. Was, I was very honored to be a part of that film. I know in my day, a woman would rather be shot than have yes. gray hair. Yes. Oh, gray hair, like some old, well, I don't want to look like my grandmother, old lady. They used to call themselves, uh, I don't want to be an old lady. I need to have, well, you know, back then the hairdos were different. Everything was teased up and sprayed, and we could cover roots and stuff with pieces of hair. Today that you leave your hair flowing, you, you you get a touch, you know. You you get a touch up on Monday, Friday. You got roots. You got roots, <laughs> and it's expensive, and it's it's a lot of work. So going gray is easy, and it's look at you. I mean, you're definitely a model for gray hair. You know, you and that beautiful Spanish model. What's her name? The famous one, the skinny, gorgeous old lady. She's as old as I am. Well, oh, all the white. Yeah, yeah, what's yeah, yeah, name? yeah. Um, I can't remember her name. We watched the documentary. And she, she started. She started. The, she started the blonde hair, and made yeah, made great. every. I mean, she's Carmen gorgeous. Del Rio. Yes, no. yeah, I think that is right. What is it? Carmen Del Rio. Carmen. Carmen is the first. Del Rio, maybe. Thanks. Stunning model. She's been around yeah. since my day. I remember her in the nineteen sixties, and she was young, of course. Now she's a hundred and looks wonderful. Not a hundred. She's probably my age, eighty. I know oh, Carmen Del Orifice. Yes, Carmen yeah, Del Orifice. Del Orifice. Thank she's you. Like, she's freaking awesome. And you're going to be like her when you're a woman in the eighties. God willing. No, really, because That's you know crazy. when I was your age, I looked younger, and now look at me. I'm an old bag, and I still don't look eighty two. You're still beautiful. No, not beautiful, but I don't look old. So you'll you be like old. you won't look old at eighty two. 
All right, so now let's move. So first of all, you guys can follow Monique on Instagram. She's at Monique Parent, uh, M-O-N-I-Q-U-E-P-A-R-E-N-T, which uh, her website is un- uniquemonique.com, which you can find out all about her YouTube channel. And actually, you have one of the easiest websites I've ever seen to navigate. Oh, thank um, you. I have to go. You know, I do at least two a week for guests coming on. And, yeah. and your, your website is so easy to navigate. It's so broken out, so nice and simple. Uh, I was super impressed because sometimes you know you have to go fishing for information, and even on a website you can't find what you're looking for. So I think uh, your website is fabulous. So Isn't everybody check true? out every, so everybody cool. check out really uniquemonique.com. I love that. Um, so you guys, the original- people called me unique Monique from the time I was a little baby. Right. Oh, unique that's cool. Monique. So but it I mean, was easier wanna, to remember. Yes. I want to tell everybody how I met Monique. I did not meet Monique in person. I met Monique on the screen. No, you met her before that. No, I didn't. Yes, you no, did. No, I did not. We did too. Well, I didn't know her. You didn't know her, but we met her. I, weren't you at the Halloween hotness on the, yes. the roof? We met her on the roof of the... What, what were you dressed as? I had long red hair. I was a pirate. Oh, I remember now. Even, the, I, even my makeup artist didn't recognize me. Yeah, well, I, let's... Well, shut your fucking well, mouth. that's how we met her, though. my whole thing. <laughs> Oh, it was so it was so wonderful, so theatrical. Okay, so, so be theatrical. It was so again. Hollywood. We'll pretend like we didn't. The first hit, time no, I met Monique was on the screen. <laughs> she was in this wonderful movie that's soon to come out called "That's a Wrap," directed by Marcel Wel- Walsh, starring Monique and Sarah French. And I said to Jimmy, "My God, that woman is absolutely beautiful." And we we, we did. Then, of course, I met her in person. And she was even more beautiful in person. But tell us about the role you played. I won't do it because I'll give it away and Marcel will kill me. So you tell me your role in That's a Wrap. What I love about the film That's a Wrap is it takes, it, it exposes so much about Hollywood and uh, uh, the movie business and surviving the movie business. And, uh, my character is so very much like me. She is a woman who has survived the movie industry for 30 plus years. And all of the things she has had some success, not major success. She's, you know, we're all looking for that big role. We're all waiting for that big, big break. And she's she's still plowing away and she's still at it. And uh, she expresses a lot of her frustrations that she has felt from the movie industry and what she's been through. And it's it was very, very wonderful experience for me. It's freaking awesome. And also, at the, at the very end of the film, I want you all to remember this if you can. Of course, you won't, but try. Pay special attention to her speech that she does. She does a monologue, which is quite long and interesting and so well done. And that's when I said to Jimmy, not only is she beautiful, but the lady can act as well. Thank you. I like love it. Real quick, I have to do an interjection because it's funny. Wait, I'm still talking Wait. about that's a wrap. Well, we're going to come back to it. Hang on one second. Because okay. so, uh, Dave Hughes, first of all, say hi to everybody in the chat room because I don't think we usually hi. have you. Uh, Dave Hughes uh, wrote in there that Unique and Monique were Axel Foley's daughter in Beverly Hills Cop 3. Did you know that? No. <laughs> I did not know that. Well, now I love you have that. to it for you. Um, and then <laughs> going back to That's a Wrap, you guys. So That's a Wrap stars lots of people that have been on the show. Um, Serena Vincent's in it, Sarah French, Robert Donovan, who's coming on soon, Dave Sheridan, Adam Bucci, Sarah Polidnack, Jed Rowan, Gigi Gustin, um, written with by Joe Netter. Um, it's a great film, and you guys are going to love it when it comes out. And we're going to do did, a cast did, show. Did you, did you work with Dan? Dan. With Dan. Dave, Dave, did Dave, you, Dave did you Sheridan. work with Dave Sheridan? Uh, I did not. Oh, because I worked with him and he's the best. I love that guy. He's an incredible actor and he feeds you back. And he's, yeah, I really, I, I so enjoyed working well, with him. Well, I look forward to when I do work. Oh, yeah. I would work with him anytime. You know, some actors you don't want to work with, they stink. But yes. he's really good. But good. going back to That's a Wrap, back that's a rap shows the bitches of Hollywood, yes. the backstabbing, no good rats that do anything yes. to get your part or put you down. 
they say the most dreadful things about you. Things like, oh, I could have played that part better than her. Things oh, like everyone that. says that. You know, well, those people, well, they're not nice. The people that say that, I don't appreciate. Well, and we, we, we all know those people. Yes, we don't, but, yeah. but don't and, go to the direct. Don't all go know to, those people. It's not just in the movie industry. Yes, you're right. M Monique, don't go to the director of the film and tell the director of the film that you could have done better than the person that just shot the film. Yes. That's that's low dog. You have right? to tell me who did that later. You okay, we will. <laughs> Ask Marcel, he'll tell you. <laughs> so oh, I already, you know, I know who did it. I, I, I can imagine the many people who said that. Well, Holly, and it also shows how Hollywood is so corrupt, and the 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 men that suggest to women to go to bed with them to get a part, and it's yes. just a wonderful film. It's a comedy, by the way, but it's a black comedy. Yeah, it's, it's a black, it can't comedy. black comedy because I don't think that's Negro. No, you can do. It. You can say no, black don't comedy. Think it's Negro. Dark comedy. Dark. Dark. It's dark otherwise, comedy. you say black. It's, it's a horror people. comedy, so it's going but, to appeal to people who like horror and it's going to appeal to people who like comedy and it's going to appeal to people who like seeing films that feature women who are not 20. I mean, we have a lot of 20 year old women, but we have women <laughs> right. who are, aren't 20 who right. also get to be represented. Now this, I love this film. It's I, I, that's, I call it a comedy well-written, but of course they had to put some crap in it, which I call crap. Blood, guts, stabbing yeah, yeah. knives, chopping blood, <laughs> eyeballs blowing up. Don, you'll love it. I don't I don't <laughs> like any of that crap. If that was all edited out, I would call it a classic film. But because they put that stuff in that everybody loves so much, it's a comedy horror film. But it's it's very well done. I didn't look at the one thing that I can't talk about because I knew it was coming and I looked away because I couldn't possibly <laughs> There's times when you need to, when you know something's coming and you know you don't want no. to see it, you just look away. I, I love it. It's, it I was am fun. a person yeah. who looks away from horror films frequently. <laughs> no, it was just, I can't, I'll say, after the film comes out, I'll tell everybody what it was in the film that freaked me Which out. Which we're going to have a casting, uh, yeah. a cast show of all the cast. The thought of on. that happening. Oh, I'll, 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 I'll give, I'll give them a the hint. The out. thought of that happening to me frightens the hell out of me. Okay, well, we'll <laughs> Yeah. So okay, so I, uh, I, I, well, I want to talk about Sarah French. Okay, Sarah French, who is a fine actress and a very yes. beautiful girl. Yes. She doesn't let her beauty get in front of her acting, and I like that. The beauty is yes. in the background; the acting is in the foreground. Sarah did a very good job on this film. I, I've got to say, the both of you were, were you worked in in harmony, even though you weren't in many scenes together. The harmony was. Was in, you both had the same texture in the yes. movie. Yes. That's the word, texture. A lot of times I'm in movies that I'm one texture, which is good, and the other person <laughs> is another texture, which is lazy. <laughs> yeah. Lazy actors. Have you ever worked yes. with a lazy actor? Oh, many times. And I'm going to say I've been a lazy actor. No. There have been times in my life when I was a lazy actor. I've I've been in I've been at it for 33 years. I've done almost 200 films. I was not perfect in all of them. I have made mistakes and watched the film later and went, "Yeah, I'm not doing that again. You've got to remember that this lives forever. You need to be better." There you go. No, I've never worked. I mean, I've been in the business 64 years of television, stage, and movies, and I've never, ever been a lazy actor. In no. fact, some people, the director sometimes used to say, Ron, take it down a little. You're a little too hyper. You know, because I would do more than I should when I. Yes. So I, I, I watch that. I control that now when I work. Now when I work, I, I'm, I'm older also, and I've learned a lot. As you grow older, you don't need to impress on film. All right, my turn. Okay, so here's oh, what I so, Okay, so first of all, you haven't been pigeonholed. So basically, you're doing everything <laughs> sci fi, horror, indie drama, comedy. You don't seem to uh, veer away from controversial subjects because you did another movie called Cuck, which I, I'm going to watch. It looks, you know, uh, I, it looks very, very interesting with some really cool people in it. 
And uh, and Sally Kirkland is in it, and Ron's friends with oh, Sally I love Kirkland. Sally. Sally's a darling. I love her. And, yes. uh, and Timothy V. Murphy, who's getting ready to come on our show soon. So like, I want oh, Sally. I love him. Wait a minute, Monique. Yes. Monique, was Sally okay when you worked with her? Yes. Because I wanted to come on the show that she was she was supposed to come on, and then she was sick. I haven't well, seen. We shot that in, in 2018. So. Oh, 18. Okay, that's that's. I'm talking recently. I haven't yeah. seen Sally in a while. I, I also have to call I also read that you studied acting at the Beverly Hills Playhouse under Jeffrey Tambor and and Milton Katzelis. I don't know how you pronounce his last Milton name, but Katzelis. I love Jeffrey. I love Jeffrey Tambor. He did a movie. Yeah. He's just a phenomenal actor. So to have him as an acting coach would be must have been amazing. And and how did you decide to 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 do that? To, to, to you know, to I I was living in San Luis Obispo, which is my hometown. And a film came to shoot there, My Blue Heaven with Steve Martin. And I got hired as an extra on that, which was very exciting for me. It was my my first experience in a movie. And every leading woman in that movie had me removed from the scenes that I was going to be an extra. (laughs) (laughs) Because they're too gorgeous. (laughs) But they kept wanting to have me around on set. So they brought me in as a um, a, a stand-in for Carol Kane, which oh, was oh, I want to work with blessing. Carol. It's like I got to see so much more as a stand-in than I would as an extra. Yes. Right. And, you know, got to hang out and talk to actors. And I remember talking to, to various actors and I had been – exploring the idea of coming to LA and being an actor. And one of them I I talked to was very, I said, where should I study? And he said, you need to study with Milton Katselis at the Beverly Hills Playhouse. If you can get in there, you're going to really get some good knowledge. That's awesome. When I moved to Los Angeles on January 9th, 1990, the first thing I did was go have an interview at uh, the Beverly Hills Playhouse and got accepted and started training. There you go. And here you are. Now, answer me. Did you get to know Carol Kane? I did not. Oh, because I might be in, she might be in my movie. And I I like to know a little bit about the actors, if they're generous or whatever. So I always ask her out. This was uh, 30 plus years ago. She was a joy. She was an absolute joy. I, what I little I saw of her, she was a delight. I think so. I think I that's like, what she it. is. I think she she'd be very good for the film we're talking about. So you do movie movies, TV movies. Let me tell some of the fun movies you guys can come and see Monique in. Um, and I picked certain ones out because we've known some of the people. But The Fast and the Fierce, because we've had Adrian Paul on the show and Dominique okay. Swain. Uh, Vigilante Diaries with Paul Sloan, Jason Mewes, Michael Jai White, and Michael Madsen, and three of the four of them have been on the show. Been on. The Last House with Ezra Bustington, Jason Mewes, Felissa Rose. We're really good friends with Felissa and, and Ezra. I've known for years. Actually, all three of them we've known for years. Yeah. Jurassic City with Ray Wise, Kevin Gage, Robert Lasardo, Vernon Wells. The Perfect House, Felissa Rose. And you've worked with Felissa a lot and Jason Mewes a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And they're both and very- I've never had a scene with Jason. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But Felissa, I adore. Felissa is a good friend of ours too. So you, so you have another movie, and it's called Killer Ambition. I guess it's like a is it like a Lifetime movie? Uh-huh. That's uh huh. A Lifetime it, movie. Has it already come out? Yes. It yeah. already came out. Okay, so you guys are, and I picked this on purpose. Uh, Tawny Harrison, Jonathan Stoddard, and Sean Kanan, who's a very good friend of ours. Oh, yeah. He's a, he's a, <laughs> Sean is like a, a, my son. I love Sean. Yeah, it's, he's uh, in he's two movies buddy. that we're working on, and his wife is directing two movies that yeah. we're working on. And he's, awesome. he's a super, super guy, that Sean Kanan. And so what I did is I downloaded the trailer for, for Killer Ambition um, because a lot of the other films, I couldn't get trailers, or if I got the trailers, like the trailers weren't weren't good high enough definition quality for yeah. me to be able to show it. So what I want you to do is say who you are, and this is the trailer for my film Killer Ambition, and then we're going to play it, and you just hang on, and then we'll come back. Okay. Hi, I'm Monique Parent, and this is a trailer for my film Killer Ambition. Yay! Wow, 
Sylvia, that is gorgeous. You've always been so talented. Now your designs are sold nationwide. Some days it still feels unreal. Jesse, are you here for the design specifications? I wanted to make sure that the gemstones we're sourcing you are exactly what you need. Everyone loves diamonds. Your article comes out in the newspaper tomorrow. Are you nervous? A little. This is a lovely spread in the society section. Special delivery. I got invited to join the Females in Leadership Society. It's a group of highly successful women. Yeah, or a group that preys on highly successful women. I'd like to introduce Sylvia Stafford, owner of Lush Designs. Of course, I'd recognize a Lush design anywhere. Wow, it looks so familiar. This is actually by someone else. They're so new, I don't even remember the name. <laughs> Interesting business ventures you're involved in. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop wasting my time. I believe you're a perfect fit for the FIL. We'll announce you formally on the yacht excursion this weekend. Yacht excursion? Is there a problem? No. My mother died on a boat when I was a kid. <laughs> Why are you here? I'm sorry, Sylvia. I read the article. I just wanted to talk. After your mom died, you were convinced he had something to do with it. It was an accident. Do you really believe that? Hello? Getting anonymous calls, no one there. You really need to be careful now that you're in the public eye. Who sources your jewels? Jesse Reynolds. Do you know him? Be careful that his troubles don't become your troubles. You abandoned me over a decade ago. Yeah, well, you know, I got lots of regrets. I need to know the truth about mom. Truth can be a tricky thing, Sylvia. It's not always easy to hear. <gasps> Jesse! Sylvia! about you saying I had something to do with your mother's death you wouldn't be anything without me I love it I love it I love it I love how on the credits it says with Monique Parent and Sean King Rick, Rick, Rick I want to see that tonight how do I do it uh Good question. I, 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 uh, where can okay. I, where can uh, I find yeah. it? It's, it's a lifetime movie, so maybe on Meanwhile, the Meanwhile, Sean Cannon has lost 30 something pounds and he looks wonderful now. I didn't realize how fat he was in that film. <laughs> Right after the pandemic, we were all fat. Right after the pandemic. No, but Sean, I forgot. Sean was on the heavy side back then. Now he looks 20 years younger and far more handsome. Plus, it's so much better once you get to the gym. I mean, he's, yes. he's gorgeous anyway, and he yes. was lifting weights, and he looks he looks wonderful now. Now he looks the best he's looked in a long time. We actually and met you him. look very beautiful. You always very look beautiful. chic, very Thank elegant. You, you, you know, like red? Yes. I put I get put in red a lot because you're wearing red now, and you're in red yeah. in the dress. So, so like the red, but it looks good on you. Thank you. It's it's you know it's red I never wore good. red until I went gray. There you go. No, but red goes good with white hair. I wear a lot of red also. Yeah, the bright colors. It, yes, definitely. definitely. Yeah, yeah also, it looks like a good movie. I want to watch it. She also has a movie, Evil Nanny. You guys, she has so many movies because she's got like 200 of them. But I just you like to pick out the most Revenge Best movies. Served Chilled. Revenge Best Served Chilled. Okay. Now, I want to. Who's in it? Wait, who's in it? Who's in it? Wait, wait. Who's in it? Anybody we know? Um, not a lot of names that you know. Okay. Um, Michael Swan, you might know. Oh, oh, look at the baby. He's a Facebook friend of ours. Revenge. Okay. I, I want to work with you, Monique. Best I'm looking forward to it. I would like to play your, um, I don't know what. Wait, where is Revenge? Is it streaming anywhere that you know of, or do um, we just got to look it, for it? it? Was a, it's a Lifetime movie. Okay, so go to Lifetime. It's another Lifetime movie, but I had a much larger role in it that I did in um, uh, Killer Revenge. Ambition. Okay. And I think okay. I did better acting. Than I do. Okay. You know, I don't ask every actress that, that question. I'd like to, some actresses I wouldn't work with if I had to, I would avoid it. But there are some actresses that I think I could work with and get a lot out of. And I think working with you, I could get, I would like to play a hostile scene with you, an anger scene. Oh, that would I would be like fun. to. I would like to cross swords with you, to, as so oh, to speak. Oh, that would be fun. I would like to say, okay, woman. Do as I say, or else. And then you come back, <laughs> you come back with your answer. And Don't that would me. be my response. Yeah, I, I would love that. I think you and I could really fight fire with fire. 
B. Claudia says Killer Ambitions on Apple TV, so maybe we can see it on oh, Apple TV. Oh, it's on <laughs> Apple TV. So we're going to watch it tonight. Oh, no, it's also on YouTube for $1.99. <laughs> All right. I wonder if you're worth $1.99. <laughs> I don't know. Meanwhile, let's talk $1. about ninety nine. That's kind of steep. Let's <laughs> talk about <laughs> your boyfriend. Yeah. He's the sweetest guy in the world. You picked a good one. I did pick a good one. He is He's a nice amazing. fella. I like him. He's very pleasant. And, you know, usually lawyers, you know, they're boring shit. <laughs> no, I'm not a fan of lawyers. Lawyers are like whores. You know, they lie. They're not nice people in court anyway. But your your boyfriend seems to be an honest guy and nice. He and is fine. absolutely He's honest. Yeah, you, think you're gonna, you think you're going to marry him or what? I think I will. Yay. You, are, you, are, the, are, you, are you inviting me to the wedding? Well, we haven't gotten engaged yet, but I will absolutely <laughs> invite you to the wedding. Actually, well, though, I read they're... online on IMDb that they're registered as domestic partners. So we so, are. Uh, so, like, they're pretty close to. But marriage to is nice. I like being married to this bum. I really do. You it, guys are I, such a cute couple. Well, you know, you know what it is. Like, I always get angry with Jimmy, and I say to him, "I'm going to divorce you in the morning when I wake up." And of course, I never do. But he'll say to me all the time, "Well, we're married. We're ma he uses that we're married thing when we argue." We only argue about the business, by the way. Personally, we never we get along beautifully. It's the business that we fight about all the time. Because I know a lot about fight about something. Nothing is perfect. That's right. No, but I know a lot about the business that he doesn't know yet, and he doubts me, and that pisses he's still me a off. Baby. No, he it pisses me. No, Monique, it pisses me off. Monique, because, I'm older you know, than you. Wait, 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 shut up. I'm not finished. You know what he does? <laughs> He gets the telephone and he asks the question to the fucking telephone. No, I don't. I that I gave it. the answer. Well, that's because of why. And I said to him, right. "But why didn't you trust me with the answer? You had to go on the telephone." Anyway, now how would you handle? No, wait, I'm not finished. How would you handle a guy like that? Oh, with a lot of sarcasm. <laughs> no, no, no. Ask the phone. Don't ask me. Oh, you're looking for something. Why don't you ask the phone? <laughs> That's what I'm going to do for you. Hmm? Oh, my God. Now I'm going to be getting that every, every fucking time. No, you know what? Day. It's so much easier saying, if you if I'm not here in the morning, I'm getting, I'm, the attorney's getting a divorce. I'm going to clean you out. They'll I'm going to take every me. penny you got because it's California. I'm going to put you in the poorhouse. And then I'm going to go on Facebook and tell everybody you're a lousy producer, a crappy person, and no good. <laughs> That's my little monarch. Except monologue. for everybody knows that I'm fantastic at it yeah, all. Yeah. <laughs> I just say that to be mean. <laughs> so okay, so wait, let's, wait, wait. I'm wait. not finished. So what do oh, you? Oh, he's say still got more mean left. To, okay. Okay. Wait, what do you say to your guy when you get mean? Um, I don't. There you go. We, we don't really argue. Plus, have you ever tried arguing with a lawyer? They, they can't. Yeah, you're they, really they all, he's like a lawyer sometimes. He, he Jimmy will I say, know, be a lawyer. He remembers better than I do. He's probably right. And I'm just going to go somewhere and pout for a while. <laughs> oh, well. All right. Wait, I, I want to go back to Hollywood. Okay. So oh, right, this is something Hollywood. that I like to always ask all the actresses and actors that come on and you've done so many different films. Number one, bucket list. Like what's an actor and an actress well, up that, to you, that already that you have. Yeah. We only, only have about 10 minutes left. A Aww. bucket list of an actor and actor that you would like to work with that you have not had an opportunity to work with yet. Number one, number two. Um, what about uh, if you could have ever been in any movie that's ever been made and the actor, first of all, the actor can be living or dead. And if you could ever be in any movie that's ever been made, what movie would you have liked to have been in? Oh boy. Any movie ever. Jeez. Um You can ask the other answer the other part first while you're thinking. It, it, would, be, it would be something Tennessee Williams. Oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh it, yeah. It would probably I'm past my cat on a hat little cat on a hot tin roof days. So I'm very much in my Blanche Dubois. The fugitive days. kind. The Blanche fugitive Dubois kind. Place. So I think streetcar. There you go. Well, Fugitive, Fugitive Kind is better because Anna Magnani played that part with Marlon Brando, if you remember that film. I have not seen that film since. Oh, dear, you must see it. Anna Magnani was. She said she hasn't seen it for a long time. Oh, but you've long seen it. Time. I need to rewatch. 
I would like to see you play that part that Anna Magnani played. You would really run with that one. Okay. Okay. And you, can, and you could handle it. Actor and actress that you like think would be fun to work with. Well, I mean, obviously Brad Pitt. <laughs> Brad Pitt. It's <laughs> a lousy actor. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> You think he's actually you know, um, Billy Crudup is an amazing actor, oh, and he. I, no, I think he's a good actor. He's a good actor. Yeah, yeah, he's really amazing, and he would be great to work with. Um, I love the energy that he has, and uh, Helen Mirren. That's a now that's a good pick. Who Helen Mirren? Oh, I love Helen I Mirren. I love Helen Mirren. And, oh. you know, even as an older woman now, she's like in Fast and the Furious. She's in the new Fast 10. I mean, she's That's like great. doing you, stuff. You could, do, you could do Tennessee Williams, uh, Mrs. Stone, the, uh, what do you call it, Mrs. Stone? The rich old lady that goes to Rome when her husband dies. Mer- Helen Mirren played it. The, the uh, something of Mrs. Stone. The, oh, yeah. the, 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 the I can't Hang remember. On, I'll look it up while you guys are talking. Yeah, I'm going to look it up, too. Gosh, it, the memory thing is the thing that... We I just, watched, we no, just watched it the you other day. You know night. why? That's it's perfect. It. it plays a 50-year-old woman who is a movie star whose husband died, Broadway star, and she goes to Rome now and keeps a young a hustler guy. It's a, it's a Tennessee Williams that's one. Very Tennessee. Yeah, that's so Tennessee Williams. Why am I not connecting on it? I, I, I can't remember the friggin' name. The, oh, the, I got to. I got to do. I got to do. Wait, wait, the spring, the Roman, the, the, Roman, the Roman spring of Mrs. Stone. That's there it. you go. Thank the you. Roman we all did it. Okay. <laughs> I, I didn't know, did that. How did you learn it so fast? I just, I just said it. Now wait a minute. I would like to see you playing that part. You'd be wonderful yes. in it. Yes. That would I be. I agree a with part. you. You're definitely Tennessee William actress. Definitely. Yeah. And also yeah. Blanche Dubois, not bad in Streetcar. Yeah. You could do that too. That Those are fun. wonderful parts. Uh, these are these are great parts for older women. They're classic. Uh, there are not no, a lot but... of good roles for older women. I get, you know, I get scripts sent to me all the time. And, you know, there are a lot of times they're things like, I don't want to play that. I don't want to represent that. I don't want to. You know, we've had a whole myth of aging and what aging is. And there's so much ageism in our industry. Mm-hmm. And I still want to work, but sometimes I don't want to do parts that are going to make fun of aging in a harmful oh. way or, or to show. And yet, at the same time, I still want to play certain. It's very, it's confusing as an aging woman. It's like, what, how far do you want to take certain roles? Because sometimes they're just parody, and you don't want to make aging look bad. No, if it's ageist negative, absolutely. Yeah. But sometimes in comedy, we have to refer to ourselves like, like this is a true story. I called my friend in New York to tell her this, my friend Teresa. I said, Teresa, would you believe I got a new cell phone? It's black. And I couldn't open it. And I kept rubbing it and rubbing it. It wouldn't open and then I realized I was rubbing the back of the phone. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's something that you laugh at with age because who the hell knows about these? I had a yellow one on the wall in the kitchen, you know? Yeah. yeah. So those jokes I don't mind. Those and are let's face it, these kids today, what would they do with a rotary dial? That's right. They don't even know how. Stick shift, rotary you dial. Uh, but seriously, yeah. you're, I'm you, doing You have to remember a number. Yes. Try no. that. Actually, in the chat room, they're saying you would have been good. Helen, Helen Mirren played Golda Meir. I guess the movie was called Berlin Ale. Anyway, played Golda Meir, and they, they, they think you would I'm be I'm anxious to see that, that film. Yeah, yes. but they would have to do a lot of makeup on you because Golda Meir was not pretty. <laughs> no, she wasn't. And, and they made Helen Mirren look not so pretty either. Yeah. You know, let's face facts. If you're portraying a person, you have to look like Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, But it is fun because one of the things that is really fun about aging is that I get people are hiring me to play roles that are much older than I am because I can still do things physically that perhaps my 83-year-old mother is too frail to. Right. 
know, no, so no, I, I will all the time tell Paige, well, no. Uh, 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 no, you're a, ba- you're, you're, you're a baby. I'm 83 soon in May. You're 80, you're 82, but you're... No, be 83. But you're not like most 80 years, so. No, but they hire me to play much younger parts than I am. I've never been hired to play a, an 83 year old. I play 65 to 75. But she said, I play 65 she, to 75. What she says, yeah. though, is she's getting hired to play older people because she can do the physical things that maybe know, an 83 year old can't but do. But I can do the physical also. Yeah, I know. At yeah. 83, you're, very, you're an exception. No, yes. there's plenty exactly. like me. No, there are others. We like don't know me. anybody. You know, I have to say something to Marcel Waltz because I know he's watching. Hey, Marcel. I referred hey, Marcel. to Marcel. I, I referred to Sean Kanan as my son. And I've also referred to Marcel as my son. And I don't want him to think I go around calling all these people my son. The truth of the matter is, Marcel is my grandson <laughs> and Sean Kanan my son. So, yeah. Marcel, you're my grandson. So Marcel I love could be my yes. son. I love Marcel to death. Yeah, they're fabulous. And Dom, fabulous. They're, they're lovely. Fabulous. Now, I want to ask you a question. Yes. If you're not busy Easter, I would love for you and your guy to come to our house for Easter dinner. And I'm going to invite Marcel and Dom. And I'm going to invite uh, uh, Sarah, Sarah and, and Joe. Joe. Oh, that would be lovely. Thank you. And my daughters will be here. And we do a lovely Thanksgiving. Uh, not uh, Easter. Easter. See, see what age That's does? wonderful. So if you're not busy, I'm inviting you all now. I'll send you an email. Yeah. And we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll remind you as time goes on. Palm Springs is lovely at that time of year. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. The weather's not too hot. It's just perfect. So let me go back, you guys. So Monique, you guys, follow her on Instagram. You can see all her beautiful pictures. It's at Monique yep. Parent on Instagram. Her website is uniquemonique.com. Uh, and I think if you just Google Unique Monique or Monique Parent on YouTube, her YouTube channel will come up. Subscribe to her channel. She's got a zillion subscribers to her channel, her videos. How often do you do new videos? You know, um, about once every week or two. Okay. So there's, yeah, there's a lot of I should be doing there. it more often. And I used to do more YouTube videos. But as the acting gets busier and busier... The There's less stuff. time for the YouTube. Right. I know that. So so do you have anything big coming out or out that just came out or coming out that we should let everybody yeah, know that, about? Yeah, that's a wrap. Oh, I, yeah, that. that's a wrap is coming out. I am uh, reading a new script that I am giving some serious consideration to. Um, working mostly commercially lately. Uh, what kind of commercials do you do? Uh, oh, I've got a TJ Maxx spot running where I play a cat mom. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Okay. And um, I was just up doing a casino commercial. I've done a few casino commercials. And see, Actually, I've, done, I think I've seen you in a casino commercial. Yeah. It's like they're, and they're weird because they're so localized to a special market. But what's your ethnic background? I am uh, so American. I'm all sorts of different things. I am French and Irish and German and. Um, all, all the Northern European countries. Now that shows. That's why you're so beautiful. When you mix blood, you really become a beautiful person. Yeah. Because you have the genes of all different countries. I agree with that. But we were at the party mm-hmm. Saturday night, everybody. She doesn't eat junk. You know, she eats very no, healthy. No, she doesn't yeah. eat junk. Uh, she's So she, and, she takes care of herself. And we yeah. drank water. Sarah French was drinking water. You and I were drinking water. We drink water a lot. Everybody must drink water. water. And fruit, lots of fruits. Water is very important. We eat salad twice a week for dinner. I eat every night. A huge salad that I actually posted the recipe for it on my website, on my blog, because I call it my skin salad. I found when I was eating this salad two to three nights a week, my skin changed. It's got so many nutrients in it. And I look at pictures of myself seven years ago and I look younger now than I did then. Yeah, that's awesome. You're so you're oh, stunning. Yeah. Anytime anytime, I mean on your video, your Instagram, every time I've ever seen you, you're always stunning. You're just stunning everywhere you go. Like it's like you know, like when we go out here in Palm Springs, you know, and like half the people that you're looking at, I'm like, I wouldn't wear what they're wearing to mow the lawn. They look so bad. <laughs> And so, so it's it's a, such a fresh and Marcel's like that too. Marcel is always dressed. Dom's always dressed. Always. Sarah French is always dressed. I love to see when people actually 
you know, when they leave the house, yeah, they, Sarah, they look Sarah's nice. Oh, when I leave the house, I'm in gym clothes. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, pretty much always just in gym clothes because yeah. when I leave the house, it's because I'm going to the gym. And then but, I run all my errands on the way to the gym or from the gym. And then I come home because I'm a total homebody. I like There's nothing Sarah, I like more than being at home. We like to be at home too with the dogs. We have to. Sarah dresses very beautifully all the time. I'm like a lady. She dresses like. Sarah, yeah, you both, the, the two of you are very ladylike. That's why I enjoyed Dom's birthday party. It we was had, so that nice. was such a fun party. But yes. it was so nice to be in your company and Sarah's company because I was admiring both of you silently, which is something I don't find myself doing lately. Most places I go to, I'm looking and saying, oh, my God, that's a train wreck. That's an airplane crash. The other one's a car crash. We go to so many events where all the girls are wearing, like, little short skirts. Oh. They think if they look like a hooker, they're going to get a, a roll or something. And, yeah. and, and we hate that. We just hate that. I tell them, don't wear a clip cover because you're not going to get hired. You're going to get laid, but you're not yeah. going to get hired. And it's, there's this, you know... There's this whole, I've already heard you drop the F-bomb, so I know it's okay. Yes. Uh, yes. There's this whole, you know, being fuckable. You've always got to be fuckable. And so, you know, for women, they're, they're, we're taught this. Even now, you have to be fuckable to get a job. So that's, that's, every that's, event, that's, it's like you have to, oh, I can't wear that outfit. That outfit might be more fashionable, but this one makes me look fuckable. I'm going to wear the fuckable outfit. Yeah, but and then you know what? They hang their tits out, and if you happen to look at their tits, they say, my eyes are up here. You know what? And we're a turtleneck. <laughs> if you don't want men to make comments about these big, fake tits you have hanging out, then don't wear low-cut clothes. I'm very why I was in a turtleneck the other night. <laughs> I don't like women that say, oh, and he made comments about my breasts. Well, honey, they fell out. They almost hit him in the face. So why wouldn't he make a comment? Get over it. Yeah. yeah. You know, my day we had Sophia Loren, Marilyn Monroe, and my buddy Jane Russell, and they were sex symbols. Jane Russell resented the fact that Howard Hughes made her out to be the bosom lady. Jane Russell's bust size was 36B. That's all it was. Yeah. Yet they made her out to be this enormous chested woman, and everything was about that's why Jane never got a good part in a movie. Because, because everyone was, just thought sex symbol. Yeah. Jane Russell was a number one sex symbol for many years. And I used to tell Jane, did you ever want to be a serious act actress? She said, I tried once, didn't work, because they want me to be Jane Russell. They yeah. don't like me to be anything but. That's harsh. How do you feel about that? Would you like to be known only as Monique and nobody else? I mean, that's a sex you know, symbol. No, no I, don't want, I would not. I've worked hard to be more than a sex symbol. I was in my youth considered to be a sex symbol. That's where the thinking man sex symbol came about. Um, as I'm older, I don't get pigeonholed as the sex symbol anymore. It's right. it just it it so rarely happens. Or I get aging sex symbol. I see that a lot in scripts. It's like I, I the aging sex symbol. It's more interesting to play an aging sex symbol than a current sex symbol because an aging sex symbol can scream and yell and cry ugly and the mascara can run and the hair can go everywhere. And when you are a young sex symbol, you have to let one tear just roll down your cheek with your lip <laughs> quivering. It's true. That's very true. You know, it, it's... You're not allowed to be human when you are a sex symbol because you stop being sexy then and you're vulnerable. And vulnerable, while well, vulnerable, vulnerability is far sexier than, you know, a bikini. But they don't think that all the time in the movie business. Marilyn Monroe was sexy, but never vulgar. Right. Well, she was a girl, a child. She was innocent. Whereas Jane Mansfield, Mamie Van Doren were like whores. They were, they were like, you want to pick them up in a bar, take them home, or take them in a car and bang them in the parking lot. 
But Marilyn Monroe, you wanted to take care of. There was a big difference in how to be a sex symbol. Yeah. Um, Jane Russell, I always said, when they, you know, she made a movie with Marilyn Monroe, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. And I've always said to Jane, Marilyn Monroe, they wanted to spend a night with, but Jane Russell, they wanted to take home to mother. That's the kind of sexy woman Jane was. Jane was never a whore and never sleazy or trashy looking in her films. She's always just untouchable. And I think that's the sexiest woman is the woman that's untouchable. Right. What do you think? I, I think there's a lot of that. I think there's something to be said for a woman who you put on a higher pedestal. Sophia Loren is untouchable. Yeah. When she yeah. was young. See, but I work, uh, I'm a publicist, Sophia so Loren. I work with like a lot of rock stars and stuff also, and, and actors and actresses. And, and Ron always, you know, complains that the rock stars don't look like rock stars anymore. Just like the actresses don't look like the famous actresses don't look like they look like regular people, but people really want their celebrities to be on a pedestal, you know, to, to, to be different from them. And that's the way, and that, that to me, that's how you are. You know, you, you look the part, you are who you are, you look the part. And, and when people look at you, they know you're somebody, they might not know who you are, but they know you're somebody because of the way you present yourself. And that's the way I believe it should be, you know, done in the world. So I think yeah. it's fabulous. I do think there is a, a, a look with the uh, fillers and all of the injectables and, and stuff. And people are starting to get this sort of sameness where everybody yes. kind of looks the same. And you're like, well, is it is she this one or is she this one? I don't know which one she is because right. she's the one with the big lips. It's like that doesn't narrow it down. No, you're right about that. So, no. All right, everybody. So this is Monique Parrott. Go to Welcome to BreezeLine, where the sky's the limit thanks to better internet. With lightning fast speeds up to one gig, you can game like a boss, stream like a pro, and watch like there's no tomorrow. Stream, watch, post, send, and trend. Do it all with our fiber-powered network, bringing you reliable, fast internet. Welcome to BreezeLine. Visit BreezeLine.com for latest offers. Service subject to availability. New customers in select areas only. Visit BreezeLine.com for details. The Venture X card from Capital One gives you premium travel benefits. Perfect for seeing Taylor Swift The Eras Tour. Presented by Capital One. Oh, I do love her. Earn five times miles on flights and ten times miles on hotels through Capital One Travel. Enjoy your stay in Suite 13. Whoa, 13? That's Taylor's lucky number. The Venture X card from Capital One. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com for details. UniqueMonique.com. Follow her on Instagram. We want to thank you for coming on the show. Please give our best thank to have her. So uh, I want to see you soon, I hope. Yes, we'll see you I soon. I hope so. So you thank you so much. Have a great you. week. You've been a wonderful guest, Monique, and I knew you would be. And I you, love you bunches. You look beautiful. You did a good job, honey. Good thank job. Thank you. Bye. Good care. Later. Bye-bye yeah, bye yeah, to you, yeah, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Everybody loved her in the chat. Remind you she, guys, now we're going to bring You know what, on. folks? She's not fake. In person, she's just what you saw on the screen. This is not like some actresses, they're bitches off the screen, and then when they're on the screen, they're so sweet and innocent. Monique is exactly what you see. Is I love her. She's just, she's a new friend, and, and I hope a long-term friend. So here we go. Now we're going to bring on our next guest. Let's make sure we can hear him. Uh, go hey. ahead and bring him in, Juan. Hey, CJ. Hey. hey, Min. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, my God. you got such white teeth. It's scary. It's fabulous. Yeah, well, you know, I don't have to worry about my appearance. I wear a hockey mask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, horror icon, actor, legend, CJ Graham. Hello and welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's super exciting. Um, since you don't really know us, this is the, uh, my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Ron Russell. Hey, Ron. Hey, um, now, I, I, which movies have I seen you in with the mask? Friday the 13th. Which movie? All Part of them? Six. Part six, six with Alice Cooper doing all the music, if that helps. Okay. Part six, Jason. Okay. He, he doesn't even really like horror movies, even no. though he's in a bunch of them. I do um, them. I love horror <laughs> movies. And I have a six-foot Jason in my office that, like, swings the machete and stuff. He's a an animated one. I so I'm a yeah, I've seen fan. it. Um, so hold on. We have a chat room filled with people, so say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. Yay. All right. So uh, first thing I want to say, as I, I, I thought, have you ever done Spooky Empire in Florida? 
Absolutely. I'll be there in May. I'm pretty sure I met you there. I used to live in Florida many years ago, and I'm pretty sure I met you there. Yes. Um, because because I because I know I mean I've always known who you are from your work, but um, but so we live in Palm Springs, and I read on on IMDb that you like live in Palm Desert or Actually, Rancho Mirage or someplace. Uh, Rancho Mirage, the Agua Caliente, and Rancho Mirage, and the Agua Caliente Casino in Palm Springs. Uh huh. I, I was the chief operating officer, general manager for four years. Ah, but you're not there anymore. I retired about six years ago from the casino industry and moved and got a ranch in Montana. Oh, that's nice. So you're a local boy. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I spent 20 years in the Vegas market and I migrated over to the California market when it came to the casino industry. Um, I started in Northern California for four years and then took a contract in Southern and then made a decision to, uh, uh, you know, like I said, six years ago, when I turned 60, I decided to retire. So you don't mind the 190 degrees of summer. No, it didn't, it didn't phase me. It's the same as right now. It's negative yeah, 10 you, here. You just don't crazy. go outside as often. And when it's 110, you still stay in, right? Wait, you said it's negative 10? Yes, sir. Oh, my God. That's cold as shit. Where? Where, where he lives now in Montana. <laughs> you live in Montana now? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought he was, you said Palm Desert. No, no. He retired and he moved and got a ranch in Montana. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Monetary. <laughs> Finances, taxes, and some of those things were determining factors. But I always wanted to have a ranch. I always wanted to have horses, bees, alpacas. And when I retired from the, as an executive in the casino industry, uh, you know, I got what I wanted. So I've got horses and alpacas, and I got some beehives. Yeah, but see, the big snowstorm is coming your way now. He's already got it minus ten. Well, already, well, it's not that we're on that. You got to remember, uh, I'm in what they call the banana belt down towards Billings, with the southwest corner. Um, so we maybe got five or six inches compared to everybody up in the north side. They really got hit yeah. hard. It's it'll be a negative bit. 10 for two days, and then it'll be back to 25 and 30. Come Do on. you miss the heat? Not really. Uh, it's no different. You know, You know when you think about it, Ron, it's, it's the heat is, you know, you stay inside, you put the air conditioner on. Jimmy, when you're outside and it's cold, you just bundle up a little more, or you stay inside and put the heat on, you know. So it's either or, guys. You know, either way, you got to work it. You're right. Either way, you got. I, I hate there. the desert heat of the summer. I hate it with a passion. Yeah, you know, 120, 115. It's it's inhuman. It's just it's punishable. Yeah, but it's remember the good old cool. slogan they say. Yeah, but it's dry heat. <laughs> yes, that's true. Because I'm from Florida. He's a dry heat. Yeah, I'm oh, from bullshit, Florida. Dry or moist, I don't give a. <laughs> I'm shit. from Florida, so hot I'm like hot. used to I don't it. give a fuck. All yeah, right, it's hot. So here's what it I want. It's hot here. Uh, so. So first off, because there's lots of you've been in a lot of different Friday the Thirteenth fan films with a bunch of friends, and all the people that you've worked with have been on our show. Matter of fact, we had Patrick Bergen on our show recently, and I, I know you do Highway to Hell with him. Yeah. And uh, so let's talk a little bit about Friday the Thirteenth because we have a lot of horror movie fans, and a lot of them joining us in the chat room. Uh, first of all, did, uh, I heard that you got the it was kind of a fluke how you got the part as Jason in Friday the Thirteenth Part Six. Jason lives. Absolutely, it was. Uh, I was running a nightclub in Glendale, California, and uh, I had a hypnotist, Jack Lachlan, on Thursday nights. And Jack always would put his subjects under and do skits, and he was having a company come in to shoot his production to create some VHS promotional tapes. Mm -hmm. The company that came in was called Real Effects, and Real Effects just happened to be the folks that did all the special effects on Part Four, uh, part four with uh -huh. Ted White. And they decided, hey, why don't we do a skit with Jason? CJ, the big guy over here, he'll, he'll fill out the wardrobe perfectly. Uh, they put me in, and I came through the screen. And when I say the rest is history, truly it is. They just looked at me and said, we're going to cast you. And I just kind of nodded my head, okay. And uh, a couple months later, I got a call to go down to Paramount Studios and meet Frank Mancuso, Jr. And uh, Tom McLaughlin, the writer-director. And uh, Michael Nomad, who was a stuntman uh, coordinator. So were you planning on being an actor or was this just like a fluke thing? Luck. You guys, it's like being thrown into the Super Bowl and it's the last play of the game and you score a touchdown. That's all it is. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't want to pump it up as something. I, You know, I, I did it my job. They told me what they wanted me to do. Um, I'm pretty healthy still even today. But, you know, I'd only been on the military a few years and uh, – yeah, you know, I'd never been to stunt school, so when they started setting me on fire or chaining me 20 <laughs> feet underwater to do fight scenes, I didn't think anything of it. It was a job. <laughs> you know, now I'm a little older, a little smarter. Not much smarter, but a little bit. <laughs> I wouldn't do it today. <laughs> how, how tall are you? 6'3", 250. 
Oh yeah, so you're a big dude though. Like so you're, yeah. you're definitely but, an intimidating so, force. Now tell me, what does it feel like being in that mask playing that part? Because I'm an actor. I would like to know what you feel when you're in the mask playing that part. Empowered. Good question. Empowered. The interesting thing about it, now that we see all these DC comics and all these different uh, heroes, they're all wearing masks, kind of interesting. But <laughs> back in those days, nobody wanted to wear a mask. And, you know, everybody wanted to see my face. Uh, I didn't really have that desire. It was fun. And I looked at it as fun and enjoyable and had no idea three decades later, I'd have the pleasure of being on your show. Oh, you see that? It's so cool, though. And we've had most of the... That's a scary character, by the way. Yes. Because you know, he doesn't, he doesn't you know, say as an anything. Actor, pardon me? He doesn't say anything. He just walks around like a crazy guy. And, and it's that's, that's the challenge. And I, I, I always throw it out to, um, you know, a theater, uh, an actor that's in the theater or an actor on any type of stage or even a movie or commercial that playing Jason is kind of unique. You don't get to use any facial expressions. You can't raise your voice. You can't yell. You can't scream. Um, it's a mask. Everything has to be shown through physical movement, no matter how big or how little. So scary you can't oversell it because then it looks fake. Right. He's a scary image. Yes. We've actually the had whole though, image is scary. We've had most of the Jason. So I used to live in Florida and I was a clothing designer and I would like go and take my clothes. That's how I built this show. Uh, before Ron was on it, is I would give away well, my crappy show. I would give away I would give away all my clothes to the to the all the actors, and I became friends with all of them, and they came on the show. So we've had Ken Kersinger on the show. Um, Steve Dash was a really good friend of mine. Um, you know, and he's Jason without the mask. Kane Hodder's been on the show. Like so, we've had basically you know most of the different people who played him, except for you, which is why I'm happy now that we have you on because. Uh, cause even though Ron's in a bunch of horror movies, he doesn't really watch them. He doesn't really like them. But me, like I'm a publicist and I watch them all day long while I'm working. Cause I, I freaking right. like, I, I don't like anything negative. Oh, and I, right. find, I, I, I find that horror movies are so negative because the joy they bring to people are slashing blood, guts, horrible murder, destruction of another human. And I know it sounds stupid, but I'm in them. <laughs> but, but you know, you know what, Ron, and it's it's kind of odd you say that because I I think the same philosophy when I think about it. But I've had uh, fans come up to me and thank me because they had challenges in high school. They'd go home and watch the movie and they'd settle, meaning they'd relax. And I'm thinking, okay, so that makes you calm down. And I would think just the opposite, like you and I are thinking, make you go goofy. Right. Um, so it's interesting how people come. But you know what's really interesting. Uh, Jimmy and Ron, you're going to understand this. I have people come up to me that are four years old, no exaggeration, barely three feet tall, and <laughs> they love Jason. And I'm looking at them going, well, how did you find out? Well, they're with grandma, and grandma's turned on the grandson or granddaughter to Jason. And again, what an honor. You know, three decades later, we're talking about this, and it's still carrying on as an icon. And then, like you said earlier, I get the chance to, you know, to see Kane, Ken, Steve Dash was a hoot. You know, when you used to go to a gig with him, man, you know, every other word was F. And I kept telling him, no, no, the recording, you can't say that. He goes, I don't give an F. You know, you know how Steve was. Um, opinionated. And I used to just laugh at him so bad. I also think the, different, it's, the difference you know, is today, the young kids think you're a hero, Jason. In my day, Frankenstein and Bela Lugosi's Dracula, they were not heroes. We didn't like them. They were the villains. They were the bad people. The mummy was a bad person, horrible. We never admired them and wanted to be them. And that kind of frightens me that children today may want to be Jason and may want to slash somebody because the feeling is there. So I believe or I think that a lot of the violence we have today is due to the films that we we make. We don't make enough gentle, loving, kind films to show the young people that there is a side to everyone that's wonderful. We only show bad things today. Dark gray, cellars, dirty rooms, watery rooms, filthy furniture, people beating <laughs> each other up, kicking each other in the face, smashing each other, running totally each disagree. other over. I mean, think about what children have to digest. It's a lot of garbage. I think, I think you, you know, you're, you're very absolute on track when you say a lot of that because – it's not even the word digest. It's what they're allowed to see without any type of person stopping them because, you know, both parents work today. I mean, I'm 66 years old. Okay. So 
Uh, I grew up in the 60s. Um, 49 years ago, I went in the military. So I come up a different generation and a different opinion. But, you know, I was all excited back in the 80s when I had a beeper. <laughs> yes. So, you know, I mean, that was a big deal to have a $10 beeper on your hip. Um, and today, yeah. that phone and everything technology-wise, um, unfortunately, gives a lot of negativity, as you indicated, Ron, and a lot of opinion. And you get to see too many people that have the same opinion. Before you know it, you think it's normal. And it doesn't make so it right or wrong. It's just, colors. is it normal? We watched a movie not long ago where I think every four minutes somebody was being killed. Remember that movie? Yeah, I forgot what they it was. They shot them. I, I said, I can't believe this whole cast is being shot. <laughs> I mean, yeah. what is the purpose? Isn't there dialogue? Isn't there a storyline? I'm 82 years old. So I come from the 1940s. When, if Humphrey, Humphrey Bogart was shot, you never saw blood. Right. They didn't like it. It was against the law to show any kind of uh, things that would disturb people. You never saw anyone being stabbed. You knew they were stabbed, or you might see the knife sticking out of them when they're on the floor, but you never heard the clashing of flesh and blade. I think that we're, it's it's I think it's ups, it's upsetting to me. So it's got to be upsetting to a four or five. Six I don't year think old a child. four year old should be watching Jason though. And personally, I think that's a little bit young. Um, I don't think I started watching stuff till I was like fifteen or something because my parents wouldn't let me. But I'm such a fan, and I think that out of all the icons of horror, you know, basically Jason, Freddy, Pinhead are the biggest ones. But Jason is the biggest one out of all of them. Everybody knows Jason. Uh, he is the most iconic. He does have the most movies. And your movie that you're in specifically is one of the best of all the movies because some of them are really bad. You know, they're really not good. You watch them because you love Jason you know, mean, and you love to see it. But the one that you are in is actually one of the great ones. One of the Another one that's really good is the one that, that I liked a lot. Is uh, So we worked uh, – Lar- I'm a publicist, so Lar Park Lincoln was a client I worked with, and she's in one of them. I don't know, the one where or she had like – yeah, so I, I enjoyed that one a lot and yours a lot in the beginning, you know, the first two a lot, as I think is the best ones, but some of them are not as good. And in your film, you know, Michael Swan is a f- Facebook fan of ours, and I used to have a, an agency that books celebrities for autograph signings everywhere, and Ron Palillo was one of the people we used to book. Um, Darcy DeMoss, uh, you know, we know. So, like, yours actually has a lot of cool people who've all gone on and done, you know, wonderful things in their careers, uh, you know, after being in a Friday the 13th film. But then you've done a bunch of fan films, too. So, like, how do you like doing all that? Because I like the fan films. Actually, 13 Fanboy is a really good one. Like, it was good. It was fun. Um, yeah. And I watched it because of because of Lar Park Lincoln, you know, was in it. So I had right. to watch it. Um, so how do you like doing the fan films? And how are they different than, like, doing other kinds of films? Well, let, let's back up a little bit. When I retired six years ago after running casinos for 25 years, that was my main casinos, being an executive, yada, yada. But when I retired, it gave me the opportunity to go do fan films or to 13 Fanboy with Deborah Voorhees um, and do some of these cool things without any expectations. You know, Jason doesn't speak. So people, when they see me speak, uh, sometimes they're like, well, God, he can speak. Well, when you have to get up in front of 2,200 employees as an executive and and, uh, talk about what we're doing for the next year and give your promotional, as you indicated, um, hey, he can speak, but doing some of these. Oh, I never heard Jason talk. speak. No, he's saying Jason doesn't speak. No, I never heard him speak. No, he doesn't. But when they hear me That's speak not. now, it's fun because they're like, "Oh, hey, CJ knows how to talk." Um, I no, enjoy it because he's no, I, I know, film. I know. If not as Jason. But how he's lucky, a character. how lucky you are! You didn't have to learn lines. Yeah, well, exactly. One hundred percent agreeance. Just for the record, okay. Well, memorize <laughs> lines. <laughs> as we all I um. The opportunity to do uh, Vengeance uh, with Jason Brooks was a, a nice opportunity. He created uh, a part called with uh, Elias Voorhees, which is Jason's father. And, you know, I grew my beard out for about four or five months. They put a big wig, made me re- – I looked like a backwoodsman, basically. And then they brought me back for Vengeance 2. And then Deborah Voorhees contacted me about 13 Fanboy, which was really nice. Um, and I got a chance to work with Lar, Kane, and everybody was involved, D. Wallace – um, Corey Feldman was in it. It was really a nice film and she did a real good job, uh, putting it out there. And now we just kind of look at things as somebody calls me, I look at them if I'm in a time frame. the nice thing, men that right now is it's not a matter of a monetary thing for me. I just enjoy having fun. I'm yeah. tired. And if I can go out and make somebody smile or have That's a good day, I like it. I That's how well, he is. You know, too. I've, I've never played a monster or a killer. I've always played, uh, I try to avoid those parts. 
Finally, they offer me type O negative, where I play a vampire. And I read the script and I said, oh, I'm a gay vampire. <laughs> but you're all negative. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a gay vampire in the film. So really, I mean, that's not a, the vampire that I would think that people would be frightened of. Well, but, you know, I'm like a lot of similarities. You know, we come from no, a different it's a very, generation. Very, it's a very interesting script. And it's not uh, it's not what you think it is. It's, it's a very good script. It's about the life of a vampire who's a little light in the loafers. And it's very, very good. And I star the movie. We're married, by the way. <laughs> and, I, and I star in, I star in the To each other or somebody else? No, to each other. To each other. <laughs> gotcha. I, I, married an old, I married an older man for his money. Yes. <laughs> no, I, I want to go back, though, because, like, okay, so like in 13 Fanboy, so we've had D. Wallace and Corey Feldman and Kane on the show, and 13 Corey Fanboy Feldman. was really a good film. I'm also, we also had someone on the film who, who's played Jason in a bunch of, in a few, I think two fan films. His name's James Stokes. I don't know if you have ever met him, yes. but I'm sure eventually you will. He was a really, like, nice guy. And then in Vengeance, you know, you have, uh, so we recently had on the show Paul Taylor, who was Pinhead you know, in yeah. <laughs> recently and, and Tamara Glenn, who's in one of the, she's in, from Halloween, actually. I think if you didn't Jason. play Jason, who would you have liked to have played? I would have liked to, you know, in those days, let's remember, there wasn't agents for big guys like me. Most people wanted to show their face. Remember, as I said earlier, yeah. I would have loved to use my physical structure and went through and played Pinhead, went through and played Michael Myers, went through and played Leatherface. I didn't care about my face. I thought it would be cool just to be a character actor, stuntman, yeah. and be able to do multiple films. And, you know, as long as your arm listing rather than just being seen on screen. Um, right. In those days, back in those late 80s, that didn't exist. It was pretty much either commercially or not. And at 6'3", 250, to be fair, I'm really not commercial. Now today, yeah, maybe The Rock is big as me, a little bigger. But you got to remember Schwarzenegger in his best days – uh, was he's only six one two thirty when he was winning Mr. Universe. So I'm a little bigger, and Lou Frigno's my size, and he's a rare commodity too. You're a really big dude, though. Then, like, if did, you're like did, almost did, as did big you, as the Rock, did you ever resent the fact that you were Jason? And if you said so to someone, and they go, "Yeah, right, sure, you're Jason," well, so am I, because they didn't believe you because they don't identify your face with the character. Yeah, I'm, you know what's interesting as you say that is uh, I've been to, through. Atlanta Airport, TSA, and had a man look at my license and look at it, my name, and go, are you the guy that played Jason? <laughs> <laughs> I looked at this man. I said, yeah. Oh, that's my God, I'm a big fan. I go, and I just looked at him like, you know, I've been to Universal Studios with my family years ago and been walking down the boardwalk there, and people, a guy points and goes, hey, you played Jason. I'm really surprised how many people do know my face, but – I always say it's like if you go to India with a billion people, show them a picture of Tom Cruise. They all know who Tom Cruise. You show them a picture of C.J. Graham, they'll shrug their shoulders. But if you turn over and show them a picture of Jason, they all know Jason. They all know Jason. Everybody right. knows Jason. Everybody knows Jason. Isn't Which I crazy? forgot. I, I some, forgot. It, sometimes it's nice not to be known. When absolutely. You're out. <laughs> when absolutely. you lose your privacy, you know. Do you do a lot of convention signings still? I, you know, I, I do probably 10 a year max, if that. Um, I don't do as many as available. Uh, my friend Kane Hodder, man, he's the one out there that really promotes that guy. He's been working hard for 20 years doing these. Um, for me, I do them for fun. Um, right. I mean that. And I enjoy meeting the fans, and I enjoy thanking them for their support over the years right. and right. creating the iconic image that they've created. I didn't do it. They did it. Um, I did my job, but after 35 years – those folks are the ones that keep making it go forward. No, I like love it. And Kane Hodder, I have to say, is one of the coolest guys. Ever. He's just incredibly like nice. Uh, he's really good to all the fans. Um, oh, you have to be. I mean, I, we were, you know, Jimmy and I do uh, interviews at conventions. Um, and the guy from the Little House on the Prairie, wow, was he not nice. The one with the little beauty mark. Remember, we tried to... Uh, uh, to talk to oh, him. That was a long time ago. I forgot who he was. Not from, from Little House on the Prairie, though. Yeah, he was from the Little House on the Prairie. Anyway. And he was very curt. Most people are always nice to us. In and general. he was very curt to the people that were buying. It was, they were spending $35 for a photograph signed by him. 
And he was doing it just as though, like, it was a favor he was giving That was at the, on one of the Hollywood shows. I wasn't with you. You weren't with me? No, because I've never met him. <laughs> oh, well, anyway. I, I go to horror shows, and I like the horror shows, anyway, the superhero I, shows. He, he never gave me an... I, I wasn't three or four minutes into the interview, and I said, you know what, let's stop. So hang on, And though. I walked away. That's how bad it was. Yeah, I have to, you know, um, Ron, when I do them, um, the most important thing to me is the fans, because I wouldn't be having this conversation with both of you today if it wasn't for the fans um, and the iconic that they put forth. You wouldn't even want to talk to me. So the fans have given me that small platform. And when I do shows, I, I do charge them for the 8 by 10 colors. I don't charge for selfies. And I have people that stand in line just to get a free selfie. And to me, it's kind of odd, but it's not wrong if you want to charge for your selfies. But I jump right up and take a picture with anybody that wants a selfie for free yeah. because I'm appreciative Jane, they even care. Jane Russell did the same thing. At the Good. convention center here in Palm Springs, I was working her booth with her. And a lot of people, they didn't have the money to yep. spend to buy the, the 8 by 10 So Jane would say, come on, come by me, take a picture with me, a selfie. And she was gracious that way. I think that's really cool, actually, because yeah. it does get expensive. You know, I, I've been fortunate because I was the clothing designer guy when I met everybody and they all found out about the show. And now, because so many people watch the show, you know, we get invited to go to a lot of places and we don't yeah. ever pay for anything, uh, which is fortunate. You know, we're happy. We no, it's hard not for fortunate. It. No. Mr. Blackwell. Do you know who Mr. Blackwell was? Ten no, Worst Red List guy? No. A very famous reporter. He was sort of like my father in theater. And he guided me and taught me a lot. And he said, Ron, remember one thing. If you perform a service for a company or for a foundation, be certain that you're uh, gifted. You don't have to pay for it. Because it's ludicrous to pay money to go and give a company publicity. Correct. You know, so that's the only time that we don't. So we do definitely, I like getting, uh, what is it called again? Uh, Getting comped. I like being comped if we're there to promote you. Right. If we're not there to promote you, then, of course, we'll pay our ticket. Right. But I'm not, I'm not going to promote you and pay to do it. I have a, a big <clears throat> social media following. I've got about a million and a half followers through the different platforms. And, and I like this show, like you're like I put the picture of you and our first guest up on TikTok and it got a hundred and something thousand you know, views just on TikTok. Um, that that you were coming on the show and 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 you're like iconic because even though you're Jason uh, only in one of the main films you did a bunch of other cool shit but because your film is one of the better Jason films right. like everybody knows who you more are. famous film. when I put it and, and you've been in, and you've been on a, you've done a lot of podcasts of friends of our shows and and now I see that you did some films uh, uh, with James Balsamo you did like uh, Slice. And yes. uh, I don't know, as, Te- as Teddy told me to, I don't know if that's a James Balsamo, but we're friends with all the Felissa Rose and Lisa Wilcox and, yes. and uh, James Balsamo and Harry Manfredini and Greg Talley and stuff. We're friends with all those people. All we see them in L.A. all the time. Them. You know, we go to – basically, it's the same group of people that goes to every, you know, event. We so have we, our network, we, right? We travel in yes. packs. We travel in packs. So we travel in packs. And so it's Harry, a lot of – Harry just sent me a request to hook into my LinkedIn with me just yesterday. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. We actually met him at a movie oh. called Hanukkah, Harry Manfredini. He's oh, yeah. He's a composer. We met him at yeah. this movie. It was was not the best movie ever, but it was fun. And uh, and I guess he did the score for it, so it was oh. a lot of fun. So let's, let's ask – let me ask you this. So, so uh, let's – Cause you did, you did. So did you, first of all, you, you're considered a stunt man now also like, cause you do st- stunts or well, you were, or you did that stunts. Was, that was the thing about Friday the 13th. They weren't looking for a quote unquote, an actor. They were looking for a stunt man. Uh, and at that time I'd never done a stunt in my life, but uh, Michael Nomad, the stunt coordinator had enough faith in me that he felt physically I could do what was required. Um, so everything I did is me and my own stunts. Um, we were at USC or UCLA uh, diving pool in LA. It's 20 feet deep uh, mm-hmm. at the bottom, chained down, breathing off regulators all night. Um, we were in the lake, you know, being set on fire. We were going through doors, through walls. I shouldn't say we, I, and <laughs> I, you know, and they'd hook a cable to my back and hit me with a shotgun and jerk me back. And I'd be flying through the air. Um, but that's the interesting thing. Like Kane and a few of the guys, Steve Dash, would look at me, and they found out one time during a panel that I'd never been to stunt school, and they just they, they couldn't believe that I'd done all my stunts. Well, I was pretty healthy and pretty young and pretty, you know, agile and dumb. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
they paid me and it was my job and I looked at it as a job, you know, so I was very proud that I was able to deliver what I'd like to hope is a good performance. Oh, no, it was a great performance. So are those Jasons behind you or any of those actually the original ones from the actual movie? No, in fact, when you said earlier you had the six foot one, I've seen that one with the machete that moves. This yeah. one behind me is just a mannequin. It's six two and it's in my office. And then, of course, the headpiece behind me. Um, you may or may not know, but if you look right there over my right shoulder, um, <laughs> when I was in about 1987, I worked down in Culver City at Chippendales. You were at Chippendale? Yeah, I worked for Steve Banerjee. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah, I did you're, that for about oh, less than a year, but I was there uh, down at the you're, old. You were one of their yeah. strippers. Pardon me. You were, a, you were a stripper. I did my job. <laughs> oh, you're embarrassed to say you were a stripper. You know what? It's interesting. Nobody knew that. Nobody's seen that behind me. If you can barely see it on the wall, it's framed. Yeah, you can see it. It's up there. <laughs> and that's me in the middle. That those are my cuffs and collars and spandex from Chippendales. Um, I kept them under wraps until about five, six years ago when I retired. Nobody had ever known that because in those days, you know, we didn't have social media. You got right. some eight by tens and that's about it. So, but I still have some beta, beta, if you remember beta guys, uh, commercials that I did, you know, the guys all standing up and stuff. So, you know, I, I've been very fortunate, you know, going through the military back in the Vietnam era, then coming through and playing Jason and, and being a, a casino executive and now just enjoying myself and meeting everybody out there, including yourselves, and, you know, just trying to be a positive vibe, you know? Well, were you married at the time that you were a Chippendale dancer? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, then, so then you must have enjoyed all the ladies. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know my wife is listening to this probably, so I'm going to be real careful with these answers now, okay? <laughs> these are well-scripted answers, guys. But is it true that they would... I, I, I had, had to put this politely. Um, well, throw their panties at you and things like that. You know, it was, it was very interesting. I mean, uh, I watched the series recently, and a lot they caught a lot of it very well. And Steve Banerjee was an interesting person. I, I mean, I feel bad for everything that transpired, of course, and the loss of life that he was involved in. But he was a very unique individual. Um, yeah, it was a little bit wild there. You know, I mean, until the doors opened up at about nine o'clock for the, the guys to come in, it was just a bunch of cuffs and collars and girls. Um, I wouldn't, I don't think it's anything you want to tell your mom about. Right. But you never but, stripped, you never stripped nude. No. You just went down to a G string. Yeah, the, the T back, you know, the T back, not the G string, all the way. The T back has a little more material, guys. You know that. It's like two inches and it gives you a little better, higher frame on your waist. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't like you had to go naked. <laughs> yeah. I love it. No, because, you know, I also, there are some clubs today where they go naked. They also, you guys, Boys and girls, girls. you're right. Uh, you guys, CJ's Instagram is at C period J period Graham underscore. Yeah. Um, somebody well, else had CJ That's Graham. a funny story. <laughs> somebody told me about a club in Puerto Rico, I think it was. An, an, a, a male dancing naked club in Puerto Rico. And the lady had a drink on the table, and the guy walked over and swung his body, and with his penis, he knocked the glass off the table. That's a good show. <laughs> so I, so I thought to myself, "Wow, that guy's lucky." <laughs> you know, I, I, I will tell you though, and and just to, to giggle about it, uh, when I was vice president of casino operations at the Palms in Las Vegas, right in two thousand six, we opened the Playboy Club. I don't know if you remember the Playboy Club. Um, so I, I had to go down to the, uh, meet everybody down in, uh, Los Angeles and interview people for Playboy bunnies. And they had to meet those same criteria with the Playboy mom and all the different criteria to running the club. At the same time, the girls had to learn to deal cards to be Playboy bunnies. So I can always say that I'm probably the only guy that's got cuffs and collars of my own and then got <laughs> to manage Playboy bunnies, which is true. Uh, there's which probably nobody in the world that's done both. I like, love it. So does your wife get upset when she knows these stories about you? No, I mean, we've been together 12, 13 years, you know, so we're, we're you know, before her, we get, so. we're together and, you know, she has all the respect as I do for her. And I mean, right. we don't walk around and talk. I mean, she was a Budweiser girl back in the, the 90s. Yeah. Come on. Did you yeah. ever in fun put on your Chippendale outfit and dance for her at the edge of a bed? No, but she does have some videos of uh, us on live stage down there that she's looked at a couple times and kind of giggled. <laughs> and giggled. 
you know? Because if I were a Chippendale dancer, I would do that. I would yeah. dress up like a Chippendale dancer and dance for Jimmy. But I'd ask him for 100 bucks. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, you got to remember the problem today is things don't shake the way they used to back then. <laughs> you know what? Well, I've got to be honest, right? Listen, there's a market for everybody. True. I'm, I'm considerably younger than Jimmy, and Jimmy uh, only likes older men. Right. Jimmy would never go with a young person. He thinks I am the most sexiest, handsomest thing in the world. Of course, I don't argue. Of course. <laughs> You know, I just sit there demurely and smile, but I think he's nuts if you want the truth. But we've been married though for ten years. Yeah, oh, I'm, wow. I look better ten years ago. No, you look fabulous always. <laughs> but anyway, um, there's something to be said for every age, and I think you're still a handsome guy at sixty-two years old. Sixty-six. Oh, sixty-six, but it's still. And, uh, and and you know, and I think your wife you got the nicest teeth. Though, and I ever. think your <laughs> wife would agree with me. Yes. So. So let's say uh, we have we have five minutes left. Let's say you okay. were gonna uh, you're an actor, and they come to you and they say you're going to be in a movie, and the movie could be with any male and female actor on the planet, living or dead. Who would you want to be in the movie with? Oh, that's a tough question. So let me think that through. I have and while you while you while you're thinking about it, the second part of the question will be: If you could have ever been in any movie that's ever been made, what movie would you have liked to have been in? Well, let me answer the, the second question. I, I have a, a thing. Uh, I think Brad Pitt has done some great uh, films over the years. Uh, as all actors and actresses had a couple, you know, that weren't quite as successful. So uh, I think Seven Years in Tibet would be an interesting one. Oh, with that movie. Because it's got some foundation to it. It's just not a fly-by-the-seat film. Yeah, got the that worst, was one of got the worst reviews. It was one yeah. of his better films, though. It, I they thought it said was it was good. such a terrible film. The yep. film, if I had to do a Brad Pitt film, which I'm not a fan of his, but if I had to, I would do the one where he goes back in time. He's aging. He starts off old and goes back to a baby. What was that film called? Yeah, Benjamin Button. The Benjamin, Benjamin. Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Right. That was an interesting script. Yeah. And right. all the makeup, you, you should have done that because all the makeup changes are great from right. old to younger to younger to younger. All right. So what, what actor and actress would you like to work with? Well, it's still a loaded question because somebody's going to hit me when I get to the next convention because I didn't say them. No, no, you could say you want one of. You know, I was, thinking, yeah. I was yeah. thinking about running for president in 2024, so I'm looking for a politically correct answer that I can slide by on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I don't, I, I, I'd have to think that one through logistically. Well, hey, but hey, I, hey, tell hey, you, hey, I am hey, impressed hey, with hey, quite hey. a few of the actors out there. Um, and I mean that sincerely. I not being an actor per se, I can really look at people and go, wow, that's amazing. That, I mean, it may not be a great storyline in this, but the person can really carry a character. And I can Do you like Tom it. Hardy? Do you huh? like Tom Hardy? Do you like Tom Hardy? Oh yeah, I like Tom. Like I like that movie Warrior that he did as like the MMA fighter or whatever. Like that was a great movie. <laughs> but it's CJ, if anybody asks you that question, here's how you get out of it. You say, oh so many women and men I would love to work with. But right now, the only one that comes to mind quickly is, and that's how you get out of it. <laughs> and that is Ron Russell? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, I, you know, I ran a billion-dollar casino. I'm, I, I, I can stay on top of it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, there's got to be someone that you – listen, you're in a Jason movie. Now, did you did he was was Jamie in your movie? No, that's no, she was not. She's in Halloween. Oh my! Oh Jesus! Am I getting no. old? Yeah, she's in Halloween. That's Michael, Michael Myers. No, I, yeah. I I get confused with you and him. Yeah, I have them all in my house and in my office. Right. Well, so well, what? Let me help you with that. Wait, let me he's got two minutes. Ron, let me help you with that. I and this is what I always tell you about Michael Myers and Jason. Real men, we use a machete, not an Outback steak knife. <laughs> <laughs> What a great quote. Oh, my right? God. That was a great quote. Don't forget that. I really like that a lot. I, uh, I forgot it. I'm 82, so I forgot it already. But you know, the nice, thing, the nice thing, guys, is I get to see all the Michael Myers and Leatherfaces and Pinhead Doug out there. And I, I, Tamara, you were talking about, and the different, you know, Darcy. It's really, for me, a pleasure. Um, 
you know, their resumes are as long as my big arms compared to me. Um, So when I see them, I'm just as giggly as any other fan to meet them and a pleasure because to me, it's like, wow, how amazing this opportunity because of wearing a hockey mask. Oh, no, that's very true. We recently in the last year we had Tyler Maine and James Jude Courtney on when we when all the Halloween stuff was going on, and so we like love it. They're and I fun. Think it's they're fun movies. Just don't take them seriously, children. That's they're right. actors yeah. making believe. There's no such thing as Jason or Michael Myers. Though, look, this guy is Jason. See, he's a real person. Nice. He's not a killer or not, but he portrays a part of. When I meet young people that you're talking about, I'm, I consider young under 12 or 13 and down. Right. Um, most of them haven't seen the movie, to be fair. They know uh, who Jason is, but the parent doesn't allow them. Um, but they're That's so in, in, engaged with the Jason concept. The first thing I do to those young folks is I want to talk. I ask them how they're doing in school. You know, sure. That's and, good. You know, and what are you doing? And, and there's times that I'll give something to them. Or they'll bring me a, 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 a photograph that they've made with crayons, and <laughs> they want to give it to me. And, I, and I'm like, okay. And then I said, well, do me a favor. Can you sign it? Most of them can't write, so they print, right? And then I sign a picture and give it to them and trade it. So we're doing a business transaction. Oh, that's right. nice. That's so cool. me one and autograph it. Good. And I'm yeah, giving you're you a good contract. soul. You're a good soul. All right. So we're out of time, That's which is nice. unfortunate. But you're I a nice this. guy and a good soul. I wanna, and you're not Jason. I loved uh, you are Jason, but not a killer. No, you're that. not Jason. <laughs> you are an actor portraying Jason. Keep I think that, that uh, I want to congratulate you. I think that you're one of the, you seem to be one of the most, I don't know, the, like the nicest celebrities playing the iconic part. They're all very nice, but, but the way you give nice. back to the fans and everything is really great, and we love to see it. We want to thank you for coming on the show. We want to thank Ruby for setting this whole thing up and um, hope you love life in Montana, and maybe we'll get a chance to work together because I produce films. I've got nine of them I'm working on, so we'll thank see what you. we'll do. And we'll see you portraying Jason. There thank you go. You. Well, hey, thank you on, so it's much. It's on Netflix, I think, isn't it? Thanks, Jason. I mean, thanks. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's we not, go. Jason. I know. we got to go, though. We're way over time. Bye-bye. Two minutes. Bye, CJ. Bye, everybody. Bye, now. All right, everybody. Thanks, everybody. We'll be having a great show next week. We had a great show today. We want to thank Monique bye-bye. Parent bye-bye. and bye-bye. CJ bye-bye. Graham. Bye-bye. See you guys next week. So can try not to so Yeah, we in the mix. Yeah, we in the mix, it's another episode Here we go, the Jimmy Star Show, we're Ron Russell Interviewing the hottest, newest, and truest of today's celebrities Make sure to subscribe so you can get notified weekly Jimmy Star, he's the king of cool Ron Russell, he's a gorgeous dude Chat room is live and you would be a fool Not to vibe with us at the Jimmy Star Show With Ron Russell, come and watch it live on W4CY Radio Miss some past episodes, download on iTunes The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell It's the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell Venture X from Capital One is the travel card for people always asking, Where next? You earn 10x miles on hotels and rental cars, and 5x miles on flights booked through Capital One Travel, and 2x miles on everything else you buy with Venture X. Plus, receive premium travel benefits like access to over 1,300 airport lounges. The Venture X card from Capital One. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com for details. Welcome to BreezeLine, where the sky's the limit thanks to better internet. With lightning fast speeds up to one gig, you can game like a boss, stream like a pro, and watch like there's no tomorrow. Stream, watch, post, send, and trend. Do it all with our fiber-powered network bringing you reliable, fast internet. Welcome to BreezeLine. Visit BreezeLine.com for latest offers. Service subject to availability. New customers in select areas only. Visit BreezeLine.com for details.